Well, hey everybody, it's great to be back with you again. So glad that you've taken the time to spend with me here for the next oh, 20 or 30 minutes just going through God's Word. And uh, before we start, I know this much that without the Holy Ghost, we can do nothing. So let's just go to Him first and uh, pray His blessings on our time for tonight. So, Lord God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you and all your glory would come down and visit each and every single one of us. God, we ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that you would release the Holy Ghost to teach us from your word today. Holy Ghost, I pray that you would just release your word through me, that I would be a vessel of honor for you, and that you would be glorified and magnified with what you have put upon my heart. Holy Ghost, do your work in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I ask. Amen. So guys, I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to come in week after week, and I know you could be doing some other things, but to spend some time with me, I really appreciate it, and it's important that you guys know that. Uh, I love you dearly, and, and I thank you for being here. So I pray that uh, you actually do get some, some blessing out of what God has put upon my heart here. And so the, what the Lord put upon my heart this week was Matthew 6 and 33. And so as I began to pray through this particular verse, a couple of things kind of came out to me, and uh, I'll just release them to you as as the Lord uh, gives me grace to do so. So, Matthew 6 and 33, and I'm reading out of the uh, NASB, uh, New American Standard Version, but you can have whichever ones you like. Uh, it's a fairly common verse. It says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteous, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, as I began to look at that verse just a little bit more, and one of the first things that came to me when I began to study this verse was the word seek. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of, um, you know, grammatical things as far as words go, but I found this interesting uh, as I began to study this first word as, as the Lord kind of let it uh, rest upon my heart. So the word seek actually means an attempt to find something. Well, that we know. Uh, the word seek is a desire to obtain or achieve. Okay, we, that we've also heard. Um, seeking is asking for something from somebody. Okay, um, that's we could apply that a little bit more into our um, into our daily lives, into our spiritual lives. And, uh, and then seeking is to go to a place, to, to seek shelter, shall we say. So there's this thought process of going to do something. So I did just a little bit more research on it, and it says the word seek is an Indo-European word shared in Latin with sagir. S-A-G-I-R-E. And this is what I found very interesting as I begin to go through this and pray through this. It is perceived by scent is what that word kind of means. So I began to say, okay, Lord, why in the world would you have me find that particular word? Why would you have me lean on that particular word? And why are you bringing something out that is that different and what's what's the purpose behind it so as I began to go through that the Lord began to remind me of of the things that he's been bringing us through over the past few weeks so a scent is something that we have that we would use with our nose so we're given senses in the in the physical realm so our sight our touch our smell all that kind of thing so we we understand that so, what the Lord was basically applying to my heart that I want to release to you at this particular point in time is there is something that is shifting in the heavenlies right now. And we are in a new season. We're in a new season in life. We're in a new season in this world. We're in a new season in the church. And God is preparing his bride at this particular point in time to to be a bride that is without spot or wrinkle. You see, he's calling us into a different realm. And he is releasing out his blessings in a different way. So I thought to myself, okay, God, you are giving this word 
to us for today, for this season, what are you asking us to do? So as I began to pray through that just a little bit more, I began to realize that everything that we need, and we understand this, but everything that we need is all in Jesus Christ. There's nothing in this world that that we need outside of Jesus. If we need food, Jesus is the bread of life. If we need water, he is the living water. If we need shelter, he is the rock in which we hide him. You see, and all these things we can say, well, those are just, you know, some metaphors and things of that nature. But realistically speaking, what we have to understand is our God knows what we need. So, Let's look at just one verse back in Matthew 6 and 31. It says, Do not be anxious then, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So he's already putting the basics, the foundation of our God already knows that we need those things. But what is he calling us to first? He's calling us to seek his kingdom. Well, then we got to ask the question, what is his kingdom? So when we begin to study the scripture a little bit more, we recognize that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So as we begin to seek those things in life, we're going to find that as we find those things, God is going to add all of the other things in our lives that we need. So I thought to myself, okay, God, I've heard that before, to seek your kingdom. But what is it that you're really trying to apply to us today? So as I began to pray through that, the Holy Ghost really began to uh, set this on my heart. It, that the word seek is a verb. There is an action that is taking place. And as I began to pray through that, I, I felt the Lord really saying that my people are stirring, but they're only watching. They're only perceiving. They're not participating. So I thought to myself, this is interesting because the word seek was perceived by scent. There is a sense that we are supposed to use. So then I began to ask God, okay, well, God, how does that apply even more now? Take me deeper into what you're asking us to do. So as I began to pray through that, the Lord began to work through me and, 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 and into my mind and into my heart as far as, okay, Stephen, we've talked about the gifts of the Spirit. We've talked about um, eagerly seeking them. We've talked about the fact that we are running a race to seek a prize at the very end. So that's what we talked a little bit about last week. Okay, so if we're running a race, we have to understand, like we talked about last week, that there is a training process that we need to go through before you start getting into a race. So I asked the Lord, okay, God, we talked about training last week. We talked about trying to get to the end of the race of running it to win it. We talked previously about the gifts of the Spirit, and we talked about the least of those things as far as tithing goes. So if we want to gain more things in the kingdom of God, we recognize that tithing is the least of them. And yet it seems to be the biggest hurdle. So we have to ask ourselves a question. If we're seeking the kingdom of God, what's going on with our finances? That's the first thing that I'm going to challenge you with. Whereabouts is that? And some of you even right now, as I began to say those words, you're in financial trouble because you have not released your first fruits to the kingdom of God. So I'm going to challenge you again. I'm going to say in the name of Jesus Christ, if you will release those monies to the kingdom of God, you will receive a blessing. Why? Because the word of God says to do so. And if you do that, the blessings will flow. That's what you test God in. That's what the word says. I'm not making that up. It doesn't say to test him anywhere else, but in that. Okay, so where you give your money, I, I'm not your judge. So all I'm saying is the word of God says to bring the tithes to the storehouse. You know, the word of God says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. So therefore, I'm imploring you and I can't give you a testimony of for you of God's blessings and pouring into your finances. I can give you blessings for me of what's happened when I've changed my mind and I've said I want to give because 
my God is the Lord of my finances. And I recognize that if that's the least of these things, then I'm not worried about that. I want the greater things and the very kingdom. And I believe that God is calling us in this new season to the greater things. But in order to get to the greater things, there is a training process that we need to go through. So as I began to pray through that just a little bit more, I thought to myself, okay, God, well, I, that doesn't make much sense to me as far as that goes. And then I came across this verse in Hebrews that I want to read to you, um, if I could, very quickly. If I can find it now. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Okay, so Hebrews 5 and verse number 14. It says, but, well, you know what, let's go back to verse 13. It says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. So as I began to pray through that, the Lord began to really lay on my heart that this is a season of moving. This is a season of going. This is a season for us to basically rise up. There is an action that God is calling us to. So I believe that although God is getting ready to pour out his spirit and is pouring out his spirit in many ways, there are greater things yet that he wants to release to us. And I believe that there is a training process that God wants to take us through for the greater measure. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the gifts of the spirit. So the greater measure of faith, a greater measure of wisdom, a greater measure of uh, words of knowledge, a, a greater measure of signs, wonders, and miracles. So a greater measure of prophecy. Like there's, there's all these giftings that God wants to release. Uh, like I said before, first one, tithing, but there is greater things yet. And so those greater things is what we want to grab a hold of. Why? Because as the kingdom of God goes forward and his power and his authority are released, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to find more joy, more peace, and more happiness in the Holy Ghost. You're going to find yourself just being excited to wanting to go into prayer. You're going to find yourself excited wanting to learn more about who Jesus is. So I looked at that and I said, okay, well, you know what? If we are not training ourselves in the word of God, if we're not training ourselves in prayer, then what are we? Well, we're nothing more than babes that can only take on milk. But what about the deeper things of the spirit? When is the last time that you've walked on the street and you've seen somebody there and you said, I know flat out what's going on in their lives because God has given me a word of knowledge. When's the last time you prayed for somebody and they got up healed? When's the last time that you understood in the realm of the spirit the things that God is saying to us? When's the last time that we saw the signs, the wonders, and the miracles beginning to release through us? Guys, this is a season right now that God is calling us to. And there is a training aspect about it. We are called to this training session. And so I, I want to implore upon you at this particular point in time that this is a time where we need to dedicate to him. This is a time where we need to say, oh God, I need to just hear your voice. I need to get into your presence. I need to understand who you really are. I need to understand your joy. I need to understand your peace. I need to understand your righteousness. I need to understand what you're saying to me at every step of the way. And sometimes in North America, we get the idea, well, you know what, God is, I, I love God and, and, you know, he's great. But, you know, it's not something that we really dedicate a lot of time to. Whereas if you're an athlete, like we talked about last week, you dedicate the time to go ahead and do it. You dedicate the time to train yourself. And so when we look at the word of God, when we begin to take that time in prayer, have we truly dedicated the time to train ourselves like an athlete? Have we decided to say, you know what, Lord, whatever it takes, I need to get a hold of you in this season. I'm not going to be anxious about the things that are going on in this world. I want to walk in your freedom. I want to walk in your liberty. I want to walk, oh God, and see your face. I want to set my eyes to the very throne of heaven 
like a flint. I want to walk forward that I might understand the very voice of God and the revelation that he's going to provide for us. Because guys, I'm telling you right now, I 100% believe that no longer does God just want to use just somebody that stands behind a pulpit. He wants to use each and every single one of us wherever we go in our everyday lives to touch people. And so it doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. But I believe that there is a Holy Ghost fire that he wants to release now in greater measure than we have ever known before. But in order to take on that which he has for us, we need to train ourselves so that we're able to hold a greater capacity of his grace, a greater capacity of his power, a greater capacity of his authority. And I believe that God is calling us to enlarge our tents and enlarge our hearts, enlarge our spirits, that we're able to receive in more of what he has for us. Because God is a good God. And he's not He's not looking to try and hold back. He's not saying, oh, that's just for somebody else. No, he's saying it's for you. So when you go out and when you begin to pray for people, they can feel the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost move through them. Why? Because that's God's will. He wants his love and his mercy and his grace to flow through the church. He wants to see mercy multiplied. He wants to see grace magnified. He wants to see the church as a harbor for souls. I'm telling you right now, he wants us to rise up in the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost to move forward and to proclaim his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And I believe, guys, that as we begin to recognize this and as we begin to train ourselves and train our senses, just as the book of Hebrews says that we would practice these senses, that God is going going to honor that and God is going to begin to release not just because we've not just because we're doing something let me let me rephrase this this is not a, a something where God is saying, okay, well, if you do this, I'll do this. No, that's not exactly it. God is a good God, and God already has those things. It's up to us as we, the church, to go out and say, okay, God, I'm ready to take on and receive that which you have for me. And God's saying, all right, it's right there for you. Let's go. Let's get on. Let's get on the bandwagon and let's go out and do the things that I've called you to do. Because I've I've had plans and purposes for you, and they're all good. And I've got joy to release to you. So this isn't a matter of you do for me and I'll do for you. That's not it at all. God's already done it all. Jesus Christ hung on a cross so that everything that we need today was done 2,000 years ago. So because of him, all glory goes to him. All majesty goes to him. All honor goes to him. It's nothing that we do, but simply that we walk out and say, God, I want to be a vessel in your, in your name. I want to see your kingdom come and be established. I want to see the darkness pushed back. I want to see souls set free. I want to see captives set free. I want to see people being healed of infirmities in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to see devils being thrown out. I I want to see darkness being pushed back and the light and the glory of the kingdom of God being established on earth. So you see, guys, his love and his mercy is there for us. And all we have to do is walk out into it. So there is an aspect of, like I said last week, when we start this race, there are sometimes it seems like life is tough. And we just have to take one step, one step, one step. And now we get to a point where we see in Scripture again, where is it the step that we need to go? Well, the step that we need to take is seeking first the kingdom of God. It's seeking first the very throne of God. It's seeking first his face. It's not seeking the gifts, although the word says to earnestly seek the gifts. But it's not the gifts. It is the giver that we need to grab hold of. And although we recognize that, sometimes we just need a good reminder to say, okay, God, you know what? I, I'm not looking for the fame of, of performing mighty signs and wonders so that people can be in awe. But if that happens, God, may I be humble enough, just as your word says that you became a servant, a bond servant, and, and obedient unto death, the death on the cross. Because when we obey the master and follow in his footsteps, then we recognize that that humbleness, that meekness, that humility that we would walk in, then 
that allows the very glory of God to fall down and be and be released so that his light shines through us. Not that we would receive the glory, but that we partake in the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he wants to do that. He wants us to partake in his goodness. He wants us to partake in his fire. He wants us to partake in his power. He wants us to partake in his authority. That's why he prayed in the garden, Father, that which you have given to me, now give to them. You see, he's not looking to take all of it. He wants to share. He wants to bless. Why? Because that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. If we are born again in Christ, then we are born again in the spirit of of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God says. So if those things are true, then what He has for us in heaven, we can then do here on earth what He was doing by the mighty name of Jesus Christ and by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because that's how Jesus did it. When Jesus went and was baptized, He was led by the Spirit. He performed the things by the Spirit of God. He said the things that His Father would say. His The Word of God says that if you see me, you see the Father. Well, he did those things under the unction, under the power, under the authority of the Holy Ghost. That's how he was able to release those things and the power and the authority that he had here on earth. The same way, we who are born again of the Spirit, we who are born again in the Lord Jesus Christ, are able to walk out by faith, in boldness, in confidence into the very kingdom of God, and declare the mighty name of Jesus Christ over any situation, and see the kingdom of God established in that situation. Well, Stephen, maybe that's just too simple. You know, there there are so many complex situations that are out there. I'm telling you right now, the mighty name of Jesus Christ is greater than anything in this world and anything in heaven. I'd say, I once heard the name of Jesus is the name that all of heaven hears and the name that every demon fears. Let me tell you something. Whenever we speak the name of Jesus Christ, it, it, uh, it just causes hell to shudder. Why? Because it is powerful and there's authority. And when we let our light shine and go into prayer and begin to seek God and begin to train ourselves in the things of the Spirit, in the giftings that He has for us, in the Word, and when we begin to say, you know what, God? No matter what, I want to seek you and your kingdom. I want to see your face. I want to, I, I want to bless and honor you. And what you, whatever you would have for me to do, I want to be a vessel of honor. I want to be a vessel of praise for you. I want to release the song that you put within me to magnify your name, to see your kingdom come and darkness push back, soul set free. God, release your anointing upon me so that you might be glorified in this world. Guys, I'm telling you right now, I believe that this new season that we're walking in is a time where we need to stand up, pay attention, and begin to march forward and seek the very kingdom of God in a greater measure than we have before. I know that we've heard some of these things in the past, but there is an urgency in this particular season that we would train our senses, that we would train our understanding, that we would train and by the power of the Holy Ghost. So guys, I want to pray for you just as we're ending here because that's all that the Lord gave to me for this week. And I believe that it's something that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to really uh, allow to resonate within us this week as far as what is he saying to us? Where is he calling us to go? Let's listen to the direction of the Holy Ghost. But before we go, I want to pray for you that you would receive that fire that you would receive that understanding, that you would receive that stirring in your spirits even now. So, Father, I thank you for everybody that's listening. I thank you, God, for your unlimited love. I thank you, God, for your great power. And I thank you, God, for your mercy that endures forever. Lord, you are awesome in all your ways, and God, we cannot give you enough praise for who you are. We glorify you and magnify you, and God, we lift up a song of praise because you're awesome, and we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. And Father, right now, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you release the Holy Ghost, that you release warring angels, that you release ministering angels, O oh God. O oh God, I pray in the 
mighty name of Jesus Christ that you release the fire of the Holy Ghost in people's lives. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that the Holy Ghost will begin to speak to people even now. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that those that are suffering with anxiety, that God, peace would rest down upon them. God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the Holy Ghost would be released uh, for... uh, to, for an anointing upon their lives, O oh God, that would break the yokes of bondage. God, for that is what your word says. No matter what situation, the anointing will break the yoke of bondage. God, I thank you that you are moving in this season. God, I thank you that you have greater things for us and that you're calling us even now. So God, I release, O oh God, the Holy Ghost into each and every single person that is listening right now. Sheke ya namase brahma iko Guys, I pray that you are just praying along as I'm doing this right now, and you're not just uh, sitting back and watching, but I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And there is a stirring in your hearts that you've got a song that you've got that just cannot be silenced, but that it would continue to rise and be and, and resonate through you. God, I pray that you would change the focus of our vision, O Lord, that we would set it clearly upon you, O God, and the things in your kingdom. God, we thank you for your word. We bless and honor you. And God, for everybody, everybody within the sound of my voice, God, I release your blessings. I release your your Holy Ghost, O Lord, into the room where they sit, where they lay down, where they're when they're driving, wherever it is, O God, that they're listening. God, I pray for a release, O God, of your holy fire, O God, that would stir within them. God, move upon them. Show them your love. Give them revelation, O God, of your wisdom, of the things in heaven. God, you're awesome. We bless you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, I pray it. I release it. I declare it. Hallelujah over your lives. Shondorom asiandam. And guys, thanks for listening this week. I pray that it's been a blessing. Seek the kingdom of God first. All the things that you need will be added unto you because our God is great. Guys, I love you. Bless you. Have a great week.